<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to From the Heart. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary. And we're excited to bring to you all that's new and good when it comes to the arts in Central Florida. Today we are talking with Betsy Gwynn, Executive Director of the Bach Festival Society of Winter Park. We look forward to hearing about Betsy's exciting journey thus far. Mm. So Betsy, are you a musician? I'm not. I'm probably the only non-musician at the Bach Festival <laughs> Society. How, how did you come to work there? I had a previous career. Uh, I worked at the Orlando Museum of Art for 14 years. Mm. It was my first position out of college, and I had a number of different responsibilities while I was there. And I was planning administrator before taking the opportunity to come to Bach. And really, while I was very nervous about taking the position without having a music background, certainly I was very upfront about that with Dr. Sinclair, I think in hindsight has been a benefit to the organization mm, absolutely. because I'm able to articulate what we do to an audience that may not have a strong music background mm. because I really believe the programming we offer can be enjoyed by people at any level of experience with music education. Mm -hmm. What did you study that uh, prepared you for both the museum and for the Bach Festival? My, my studies in college were visual arts and art history, so very much on the visual arts side. Okay, so you are an artist. Yes, although <laughs> as a non-practicing artist, I can't call myself that. My well, husband is artists. an artist. I think we're all artists. Creativity That's is, true. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll take credit well, for that. Art. So you paint? Do you sculpt? Yes, you... yes. That's I awesome. was a painter and a ceramicist. Wow. I did not know that. Yes. And do you play any instruments at this time in your life? I'm learning to play the piano. Oh, we just have right. a piano in the house, and, and I'm beginning to take lessons and nice. uh, very much enjoying it. Now, do you read music? Or are you starting from ground I'm zero? starting from scratch. That is so from very cool. Zero. Is Dr. Sinclair very proud of you? Does He's he know? He's incredibly encouraging. That's, yes, yeah. incredibly of encouraging. Course he is. Getting ready for that audition for him, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I won't be auditioning well, anytime soon. What were you like soon. as a child? Were you constantly making things and painting? I think as just thinking creatively and uh, absolutely exploring with different mediums. Uh, but I really found that in college, it was the artists and that art community that I identified with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were looking at something not for prestige as much as self, um, self-realization. They were looking and asking questions and uh, I very much identified with that. Mm. And somewhere along the line, you emerged as a leader to to lead these creative artists into more of their work. How did that come about? I think that was just a natural outcome of my skill set. Mm. And it was clear that I wasn't going to take the path of being an independent visual artist, somebody that felt absolutely that that's what I had to do every day when I woke up in the morning. Uh, and my job at the museum gave me a lot of opportunities to create budgets and projects with co-creative people, leaders of our development, marketing, and education, and exhibition staff. And I took those skills of bringing these people together and crafting stories and opportunities, mm -hmm. and I brought it to the Bach Festival and have never regretted my decision. I'm just enamored with the cultural community, all the people that give their time and talent to make it what it is. Um, it's just an incredible group of people and I'm so mm. proud to be part of it. Well, you're, you're a great leader, Betsy. What do you think are some of the accomplish, accomplishments that you've been able to help the Bach Festival Society with? What are, your, what are the things you look back at your journey so far there and that you're really proud of? Well, certainly the, we've had some extraordinary uh, celebrations and I was part of our 75th celebration. Mm. And our 80th, which we recently completed, we're getting ready to do um, a composition. We've, we've, we've engaged two artists, Paul Moravec, a Pulitzer Prize winning mm. uh, composer, wow. and Terry Teachout, who's an author and Wall Street Journal critic. Two extraordinary artists in their own right are working with Bach to compose a new work honoring John Sinclair's 25th mm. season with wow. the Bach Festival. Yeah. Um, but also leading the organization, I think, during the very difficult times of the recession and mm -hmm. keeping a program going, uh, staying within a budget that, that we can afford. What was your secret to doing that and keeping morale up? 
hard work and a sharp <laughs> pencil uh, and a good yeah, and an excellent good. artistic director some mm. and a partner in that that really knew where we could cut corners and where we couldn't mm. and I feel grateful that um, I'm hopeful that all those those difficult years are behind us and we have a bright future and we've got some exciting programs mm. coming up. So tell us about Betsy outside of the Bach Festival Society. What do you love to do when you're not being an executive director? So I'm mm. a mother. Not that there's much time for anything <laughs> outside of that. But I'm a mother you? with two boys, 10 and 13, one of which is a Howard Middle School student, which is mm. the uh, Orange school. County School yeah. of the Arts and um, another that loves to play soccer. And so a lot of my free time, what little <laughs> there is, is spent at home with them and, and you know, managing all of that. My husband is an artist, he's a visual artist. And mm. what does he so do? He's a sculptor and ceramicist. Uh -huh. Very cool. Yes, and has a studio and shares it with some, uh, some artists. So, you must have a very creative home. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. Thank you. Um, it is. What would you say to our viewers who are watching who maybe would think, oh, I would never fit into a concert like that or I might not understand it? Why should they come? What would they get from it? Hmm. I think. I think there's something at any level you come to a performance, you'll receive something back. Mm. So certainly it's different depending on your understanding of the repertoire or the artist performing or, or the time period in which it is being performed. But I think it's our responsibility to make sure that we give you the tools to learn as much as you can and we do that through our website and giving bios on our artists and as much information as the repertoire so you can you can digest that on your own in the comfort of your home and then mm -hmm. come with a little more perspective but just the emotional experience of being in a hall with mm -hmm. musicians mm -hmm. and if you're at one of our choral performances there's 160 singers, uh, vocal soloists, mm. 60, 50 to 60 orchestra members. To be in that environment with this force around you is unlike anything. Mm. Mm. And well, I hope people at home are hearing that, and if they've never been, will say, you know what? Let's take a chance and do it. Absolutely. Would you give us that website one more time? BachFestivalFlorida.org. Great. Well, thank you so much, Betsy. <laughs> thank you. Wish we had more time to talk, but unfortunately we don't. Josh and I will be back shortly. Uh, we're going to have a conversation about the future of Bach Festival Society of Winter Park and Betsy's own creative future from the heart. <laughs>